So my name's Brian, uh, I work for Rancher, I'm based here in Sydney, Australia. I'm joined on stage with Gaurav, who uh, is also based in Australia. And today we just want to spend just a few minutes just to provide some insight into, I guess, what we're seeing in the industry with Kubernetes and where it's going. Because I think, you know, Kubernetes adoption, we all know it's there, we all know it's growing, it's, it, it's massive adoption of Kubernetes. Um, and where we're at now is multiple clusters, multiple clouds. Uh, and so what are the challenges, what are people seeing, and, and you know, what's some advice is, is pretty much what we're going to talk about. So we did a survey, uh, an industry survey last month. Uh, we released it last month. It was about 1,100 uh, mid to large organizations. Uh, and you can get it from our website. And th 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 I think the point about this slide is really, um, you know, everybody is doing multiple clusters, right? We, we sort of moved on, as I said, from, from single cluster environments to, to multiple clusters, right? So 91%. The other thing we're seeing is multiple clouds, right? So if you see there, 71% of organizations are running Kubernetes on-premise, 67 are running on the public cloud, and so you have this overlap, right? You, you have this hybrid or multi-cloud overlap that's going on. So, yeah, if we think about complexity and, and the new world of Kubernetes, multiple clusters, multiple clouds, and now we're also seeing, uh, you know, this, this evolution of Kubernetes to the edge, right? So things like K3S, um, you know, being able to run Kubernetes on, on ARM devices and, and, and low memory footprint devices. So the challenges then, I think, are moving from, you know, just spinning up Kubernetes and deploying Kubernetes to managing the complexities of different Kubernetes environments across, you know, like larger development teams, across multiple cloud environments, you know, think about RBAC, you know, how do you, how do, you do RBAC across these sorts of things? So, Gaurav, before he joined Rancher, was actually at a very large uh, financial services organization in uh, Australia and New Zealand, and he was sort of lead of the DevOps team there. And so I thought, rather than me talk, it'd be great to get Gaurav's insight into maybe three of the key takeaways uh, that he experienced as you know, a multi-year journey, moving to containers, moving to Kubernetes. You know, they now have 10,000 containers in production across multiple clouds, et cetera. So, yeah, Gaurav, do you want to give us maybe three, three insights? Thank you, Brian. Uh, definitely. Uh I'd love to talk about, you know, some of the challenges we faced. These are not all the challenges, just the top three I thought, you know, might sort of resonate with a lot of the audience here. So the first one was multi-cluster, multi-KAs, right? So rather than going with a bog-like approach, we thought, you know, we'll go with multiple Kubernetes clusters across multiple cloud providers. And the entire reason for doing this project was the, the basic problem that most developers have. It worked in dev. I'm sure, you know, some of you have had the same issue. Uh, so we went down this approach, you know, of writing automation to build Kubernetes clusters, and, you know, we got effectively pretty good at it. So we were eventually running, you know, like lots of clusters across multiple cloud providers, and that allowed our developers, you know, lots of, you know, parts to production. The idea was they could, you know, use one environment if they wanted to test against one sort of, you know, backend integration and, you know, move it to another in Kubernetes environment if they wanted to test against another integrated environment. So, you know, we realized by doing this that we were so good at spinning up clusters that we thought, you know, let's just apply it to run multiple production sites. This way, you know, we can just do immutable infrastructure all the time. So every eight to ten weeks when we want to roll out security patches or do any infra updates, you know, we wouldn't do it in place. We'd just blow away a full cluster and build it all back. And that sort of really helped us with our security posture in terms of, you know, not being having, you know, in being able to respond to security events, you know, pretty quickly. The next big problem was RBAC inconsistency, right? The original setup of Kubernetes and container clusters that we built was initially written for, let's say, one dev team. And now suddenly, you know, there was like a pent up demand that other dev teams want to use the service as well. So we sort of, you know, thought we have to operate at scale. And the biggest problem in a multi-tenanted Kubernetes environment is RBAC and consistency. So we ended up writing our own CLI wrapper similar to Kube Control to sort of, you know, issue out RBAC to developers based on, you know, their identity management integration. And what it meant was, you know, they could consistently access the clusters and deploy stuff, but the workloads weren't consistent, which leads to my favorite example, the 3 a.m. call which some of you over here might have had, you know, that something's broken, can you fix it for me, please? 
And that was my 3 a.m. call. Uh, you know, uh, one of the pods had died for a service, and obviously now, you know, there was no health check, so, you know, some requests were failing, and I told the dev, just go delete it, and, you know, the scheduler will spit out a new one. But he was, uh, you know, sort of scared that this is prod, I don't want to do it in prod. And I was like, dude, whatever you do is not going to make it worse. Just delete it and move on with your life. <laughs> But, you know, he insisted, no, 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 this is prod, you better do it for me. So I had to log in at 3 in the morning, delete that pod, and go back to bed. And <laughs> Monday I showed up at work, some of the people who I used to work with are still here, and they know how grumpy I was, that this guy just wouldn't delete his stuff. So we, uh, we had this problem of consistency, so we, we had the CLI, right, so we forced it to, we thought, well, let's just expand it to sort of, you know, enforce standards on the deployment specifications that were being sort of, you know, sent to the scheduler. So we would parse the entire Helm manifest or Kubernetes manifest to make sure some best practices were being followed. For example, in this particular case, you know, we always had health checks on, the po on, your, on your pods, right? And then memory limits, so we could sort of, you know, effectively uh, do capacity planning at our end. And while I was there, I thought, you know, let me implement my first OODA loop, you know, do uh, container scanning in the CI phase. And, you know, that would sort of, you know, make people aware that security is everyone's responsibility. And that allowed us to sort of enforce consistency at scale through automation, which meant, you know, I could chill back, relax, and never get another 3 a.m. call. <laughs> but, but, you know, nothing works for the first time. And I say that because my GitHub handle is I broke the cloud, so I somehow always manage to break stuff. You know, I mean, I'm not, maybe I'm just talented. So, you know, anyone having worked with Go dependency management would probably know that. <laughs> but on a more serious note, when, when I imp implemented the OODA loop to sort of, you know, enforce container scanning as part of the CI pipeline, devs were upset because now they couldn't push their container images to the regi image registry because they had vulnerabilities, and which meant they couldn't test their code. And they were upset that, you know, all I care is testing my code. Why am I being forced to, you know, worry about stuff like scanning or, you know, security of my workload. So, you know, I had to, you know, write a sort of a flag in the CLI to bypass vulnerability scanning and still push the image to the registry. And sure enough, everyone was using the same flag in a few months and no one was scanning anything. So I implemented the scheme scanning in the deployment pipeline and that started breaking deployments. And people were like, oh, we didn't get notified about the vulnerabilities at the build phase. And I sort of pointed them to the log. It's right there. Have a look. Uh, can you make the font bigger? So I was like, OK, sure. <laughs> so the idea is nothing works for the first time. You know, you have to persevere. And you know, eventually, you'll get there. Whatever we did was a multi-year journey. And you know, just keep going at it. That's my only advice. <laughs> Thanks, Gaurav. So hopefully that was useful, just a bit of insight into, I guess, a real life experience of scale and some of the, the trends that we're seeing. Uh, we have a booth at the back, so come and say hi, chat to Gaurav, chat to me, we, we hope to see you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.